Today's presentation is another video for telephone collectors that are beginning their hobby collection. Today's video will be how to clean the ABS plastic parts on telephones that were manufactured in the very late 50s and going forward. There are different types of plastics that was used on the telephones depending on the age of the phone. I will be primarily dealing with the ABS hard plastic. The techniques that I show you uh, work generally very well. The two products that you see in the video right now is we have lighter fluid, and this lighter fluid works exceptionally well at removing the paste that is left behind from stickers that were put on the telephones. And then the denatured alcohol, and I refer to that as the booze, works exceptionally well for cleaning dirt out of light scratches as well as removing some of the inks and it works really well for kind of a final cleaning uh, of the pro uh, plastic and in some cases after that's done you do still need to use the Novus to polish up the housings more. And that would be a different video. There are videos, I believe, from other collectors that show the Novus polishing. I do that as a last resort. I also do some buffing. I have personally cleaned and refurbished probably four to 5,000 telephones in my lifetime, as well as I've installed thousands. This video will have a combination of plastics used on multi-button telephones as well as single line phones and handsets. The video I'm producing does not encompass every technique or every potential product. A lot of this stuff is kind of a personal preference. For some people certain products work well. Other people have their own um, favorite product that they like to use. I'm not going to tell you that any one is better or worse than the other. I will only tell you what I have found that works well for me. And the two telephone collector clubs, the first one is the Antique Telephone Collectors Association, and the second club is the Telephone Collectors International. Both of these clubs have people who have wrote articles and so forth on how to do different things. And there are a lot of very good techniques. So I do not intend on trying to provide a video that covers 100% restoration of a phone uh, that can be applied to every single phone. That's just not possible. And again, it's kind of a personal preference. The one thing that I caution is you do not at all want to use any products that has acetone in it, such as fingernail polish remover or acetone. That will damage the plastics to the point that it is no longer useful. So if you have acetone, do not use it on any plastic parts, only on maybe metals or things that you know <clears throat> that it will not mar the finish or melt the plastic. I presently have a shell for an 18 button call director. This particular shell is from a Western electric phone. It has all kinds of icky, gooey garbage on it. So in order to make this where I can have this painted or put on a phone to sell in its original color, it would have to be cleaned. I could, if I wanted to, put this in the sink with sample green or some other uh, 
household chemicals that would probably make the stuff that's on the housing easy to remove if you let it soak for a few hours. Uh, that is not uh, a reality for this video. So I will clean a section of this housing and then I will go to a couple handsets and some cords. I'm also using a non-abrasive type material. Uh, if you use such a thing as a scotch bright pad, you can scratch the housing and you would be sorry in the long run unless you use the soft side. You also do not want to use steel wool or any of that other type of stuff because you would end up causing um, scratches and then you would absolutely positively have to um, polish the housing and to me that is an incredibly miserable experience i like to take the easy way out on doing this type of stuff i do not intend on showing you the entire housing being completely clean because that's kind of a boring aspect of the video i'm just giving you kind of a quick rundown i sell items on ebay that are made to look new uh, or they're painted and do look new i also have in my own personal collection around 700 telephones so the process that i'm showing you is used on my own personal collection in addition to what I sell on eBay. And occasionally I will receive a phone from a person who wants it modified or repaired or whatever. So I could scrub on this for a while, but I need to let the uh, denatured alcohol, AKA booze, settle in on this. And I don't want to spend the time um, for the whole entire video of just doing that so i'll get a little bit more here uh, but you get the idea of what we're doing um, the thing about this phone it was left in a box and in a building that was very hot had rodents as well as dirt and airborne type stuff and uh, it basically the housing got covered in garbage also once you're completed with how these types of projects i very much do recommend washing your hands um, for those who are fearful of chemicals of any and all kind probably should not be watching this video uh, it's okay to be cautious but it's not okay to be stupid so the thing I'm doing here is very gently scraping some of this stuff off. I've done this lots and you can end up damaging the housing, but I'm trying very, very carefully not to. Because again, this is an item I intend on putting on a phone and selling in the future. So I want it to look as nice as I can. But I also don't want to spend all day trying to clean one single shell because they're only worth so much of an investment in time. So I will move over to um, a handset shortly. One thing that you can do if you have a shell that is faded, I have found after you completely 100% clean the shell and clean it well enough that you would intend on it being painted, at that time you can take the shell and put it in the direct sunlight 
for about two to three days and rotate it around 90 degrees multiple times. And most of the time for the light colors, such as the beige and ivory, ash, uh, the moss green, some of those colors, it'll reverse the yellowing back to its original color or about 90 to 95%. That is the simplest way without using chemicals. There are retrobrite processes that can be used to bring uh, the colors back very nice. And there's many different YouTube videos on that. So I will not be doing that. I just found out accidentally how to take a very dirty faded cover and make it look almost brand new. So this of course needs more, but where there was a lot of garbage here and a lot of garbage here, you can see how well that cleaned up. I will have to scrub on these spots a little bit more and I would do that off camera. Sometimes telephones were painted by refurbishers as well as AT&T, the Bell system and Western Electric. The phones, if they've been painted, depending on the generation of paint, and the use that the phone had, you will know, be able to tell instantly if it was a painted phone or not. There's several different ways of telling. One of them is if you look at where the um, logo um, is engraved, or in this case, the letters, um, if it's really good, sharp, uh, detail on the letters, the odds are it's not been painted. If you get a handset that has been painted, it kind of fills in the writing and also has a different shine on it. In this case here, the underneath of this handset was originally white and they painted it ivory. This handset for what I'm going to do, and I will show cleaning it up quickly, would not be put on a phone to sell because it looks like heck. I would use this handset on my workbench for testing other phones. Another way to tell is this cap is original paint, non-painted plastic, and the handset, G part of the handset is painted. That you will be able to tell a difference immediately between the two. Some are quite stark and some of them are um, well matched. The one thing is handsets age or even shells. The original colors will fade. The painted will never fade. In my collection of business telephones, probably 40% of them are painted. They look brand spanking new. They can be used a lot and they're going to still look new because the paint will not fade. If you're a purist and you want non-painted phones, and I like that, then you try to find the original non-painted uh, plastics. When you get into some of the colors such as blues, um, basically blue, ivory, and beige, they will fade and you will notice it very quickly. Um, here's a handset that has been painted and I can tell by looking at it and it looks brand new because it has not been yet used on a telephone set. I also have a, a couple here, that is a paint job, and you can tell by looking at the, the markings in here that it is no longer sharp and, uh, with the detail. Here's an ITT handset, and it's got a nice sharp uh, insignia on it so this would be a non-painted and this one actually for being an ash uh, did not uh, fade which is quite unusual other issues you can tell is in this case this cap has been painted the original color of the cap was ivory they painted it ivory and there is definitely a color difference 
Now this will clean up and go back on that handset and it'll look nice and I'll get all this stuff off of it most likely. And the denatured alcohol generally works exceptionally well for cleaning these types of things. I also use the denatured alcohol for cleaning the buttons on a touch tone pad when they're really dirty and, and marked up. And I would try to find a pad to show how well it works and the technique I use for cleaning that. I also clean the mounting cords on telephones. And the mounting cord I have that's dirty and large enough to make a good video of is on a 2565, well actually it's a 1565 desk set. And it's really dirty and I will show quickly how I clean that up. The technique will work on a single line phone or the business phone. And it doesn't matter if it's an ITT Western or even an automatic electric, as long as it's the hard ABS plastic. I will clean this AT&T marked handset insignia place here, which it's got um, just over its usage, dirt and slime and all that. One thing I use is old toothbrushes, which works well for getting into the, um, the tight spots and so forth where you can't realistically uh, clean it. This works quite easily most of the time. And again, it all depends on what and where this was used. It also works well for cleaning out the grooves down here in the transmitter. Um, once it kind of soaks in, generally um, it works well. I would normally remove the cap and the T1 before I would clean it. But for this quick illustration, I'm just trying to show you how things are done. And each person can have their own way. The one thing you will not be able to get rid of is the wear marks by this method. I do have a hand mounted buffing wheel for my drill and you can buff out the um, some of the stuff fairly well um, it's never going to be perfect but again you do what you can i'm using a screwdriver to get down into the groove here to clean out the stuff that was in there and again, you may have to spend a few seconds to do this because A, it's an experienced thing, and B, depends on what kind of gunk is in there. Some of this stuff, you just have to let the water or booze or whatever you're using to uh, soak in enough to break it free. On this one side note, you'll notice there's dirt here as well as dirt here. So using the booze works exceptionally well, if you can find a wet spot here, for cleaning this stuff up. And you could also take the caps off and put them in water with some type of a household dish soap or whatever you, if you wanted to. And again, depends on the amount of time that you want to put in the doing this. The objective is to clean anything that looks like dirt out of here and then um, I generally try to clean the inside of the transmitter even though it's not visible because I don't like people pulling them off and looking at it and saying oh that's gross why was it not cleaned and um, So as it is right now, it's about 98%. I see one spot that I don't like. Then in addition to that, you can take the booze. And this stuff, of course, being lighter fluid is flammable, so I wouldn't be doing this with a blowtorch going or a cigarette. Try to get it all on the camera.
I also recommend having a piece of carpet on your work surface so that um, you don't end up beating the uh, plastics up while you're trying to clean them. Um, it makes it softer for that. Of course, it will become uh, covered in dirt, grime, chemicals, and so forth. So again, you have to keep that in mind. So if you can find them some discount place that's had a change in their carpet samples, that's kind of what I use. And then when you're done with it, you just put it in long-term storage and let somebody else worry about it. You know, this is kind of a boring video to watch um, in detail. I apologize about that, but sometimes you just can only do so much in a short period of time. And so at this point, I need to check this over with my glasses on. But this was a fairly clean handset to begin with. And um, it's at this point looks almost perfect and i think i need to run over the top of it here and get a little bit more of the dirt and dust off and we got here in a crack um, a little bit of slime dirt so we'll have to continue to work on that and there's other uh, techniques, too, that can be used to clean the cracks. But at this point, uh, this is the easiest way. One thing you can do is take a screwdriver or ice pick or something and very carefully run in the crack. And you can also scrape the stuff out. So this handset, for the most part, is 98% ready to go. Down here with a cord plugs in. I need to do a little bit there. And then here's a painted beige. This is a painted ivory. And it's been like I said used, but you can in this case clean all of the dirt out of it. And Depending on the polane paint, the quality of the paint, the quality of the painting, you might be able to actually slightly buff it with a buffer. Um, I have had luck doing that before. Um, but you have to be very, very, very uh, careful. So where the bill is and it says western electric i don't know if you can see this on the camera or not I'll try to there that's all clean and in between the letters and the bell logo was a bunch of dirt and slime from its time so now it's cleaned i will show the cord cleaning of a cord nest so the cord here has been uh of course on this phone it's a very old phone but it's had a lot of mold um, and just used through its life. So there's a lot of dirt on the cord. The way I'm going to clean this will be a little unique. I will use a scotch bright pad as well as an additional type of a pad to get this thing initially cleaned. And I will use the denatured alcohol, a.k.a. the booze. And this cord should shine up to look brand new because it's a non-painted original cord. The one thing to keep in mind on the business phones, if it was originally a um, cord, colored cord, and then they painted it the silver, satin, or the gray, you can clean them. However, a lot of times, the, the scuffs on the cord and other things you just cannot overcome unless you repaint the cord. And that is a unpleasant task, to say the least. Um, and you can, depending on the paint they used and the time, you could actually clean the paint off of the cord. However, if the cord is discolored because of the paint or before they painted it, 
you're not going to overcome that issue. So I'm just going to show a quick little section of this cord I'm going to clean and then we'll move on. All right, I will show quickly how I do this. So I'm taking a pad. This has been well used, as you can tell. I'm going to dump some booze on it quite a bit. Of course, it's going to leak through. And then I'm going to put it on the cord here and run it over the cord. And depending on the dirt and the grime and the slime, um, some of it will come off very quickly. And then some of it I'll have to run over it several times. You have to twist the cable in order to get all sides of it, because otherwise you will only get two sides, maybe three, depending on how aggressive you get. Once I'm done with this, I will take a towel, a rag, or whatever, and wipe the cord down. This particular phone has got an extremely long cord, which is quite rare. Um, in this case, because I uh, can out of my workshop, I put two screws here in the workbench to um, try to do this. And this is not working out well, but um, and I'll have to put more denatured alcohol on. But this is getting probably 80% to 90% of the cord clean. And then once I'm done to that degree, I'll go back with the white rag that I was using and uh, do touch-ups on it. This works generally 95% of the time. I have had cables, cords, whatever, that were in locations. I had oils, tar, and who knows what else that was incredibly difficult to clean. And uh, in this case, I will show you how I fine tune this quickly. I hope this is showing up in the video here. Here's a spot that's got a bunch of um, grooves where, where something might have been sitting on it or pinched in a desk. So once it's done, you take your rag and denatured alcohol, aka the booze, and you address that issue, that area by itself. Same thing, I've got more spots here. Um, and when I get done with this, this cord should look really nice. Now, most cords on most phones, depending on the kind of phone, will not be seen anyway, unless you try to display them. In my case, I don't, because uh, all of my phones are hooked up and working, and they're on shelves, and the cabling to make them work is out of sight. Uh, at least at the appearance of the phone. So I would do this on this entire cord, which is approximately 10 foot. Normally on business telephones, the cords are only five foot long. But in this case, this phone had a longer cord, which makes it far more desirable because it's quite rare. So you can do the same cleaning with the regular rag, or you can use the more abrasive, quicker cleaning and then go back and spot clean it. 100% up to the user. I have a 2500 set that has a dirty touch tone pad. It's not as bad as many I've cleaned, but this one is a good example of having dirt. So where the zero is for the operator, the two, three, six, seven, you can tell there's dirt on the pad. I hope that this is visible in the camera. So very quickly, I will show how I clean these. Again, I'm gonna utilize a toothbrush, the rag for the denatured booze, and then just get in and do it. So initially, I just clean the dirt and the dust and the 
cobwebs off. Then when that's done, I take my rag and booze, and this works generally very well to clean them off and make the buttons nice and bright. So the star, the zero and the pound are nice and bright now. And you can find a denatured alcohol at Home Depot and probably most uh, any hardware store in the paint department. So right now, the tops of the buttons look nice, but you can often get brown or black stuff on the, the sides of the buttons on all four directions. And again, you can just clean that um, by doing this. And you can also put booze on the toothbrush and clean the sides, but that kind of an inefficient way of doing it but if you get one that's really bad that does work do not let anything get into the the collars of the buttons otherwise you can gum them up do not use acetone or you will just literally melt the plastic around the buttons and you have a what i call a junk touch tone pad at that point in your life so denatured alcohol is not good. Also do not, on the sides where they have the 35Y3A and the date, do not continue to rub on that because with the denatured alcohol, you can just clean that right off. And then um, the dial becomes a generic dial. And if you're not familiar with what it is by looking at it, then uh, you can be lost. And the Telephone Collectors International Library has documentation on all of the telephones. I do not uh, participate with the Antique Telephone Collectors Club, so I don't know what they have going on. Generally, they are into the wood phones and the early steel and uh, tenonite plastic, and they have a lot of people who've done some marvelous woodworking repair as well as refinishing the phones so depending on the telephone you're working on um, they are a fantastic resource so that touch tone pad without me putting my glasses on looks like it's about 90 percent to 95 percent clean the next thing I would do, and it will not be in this video, but I have a frequency meter and a way of uh, looking at the frequencies of the touch tone pad. And if they're off, and most of the time they are, I put it back on frequency, as well as there's contacts on the sides of the dial and the rear of the dial that needs to be cleaned. Um, just as a quick side note, when you push a button down, regardless of the row or column, you have two oscillators in the back that produces individual tones and combined they make a dual tone. That's where the dual tone multi-frequency came from. So you're operating, when you operate the one, you're taking a contact uh, for one row and column and that produces two tones. This will produce a different tone so this this and this are all the same tone these are the same tone and so forth and then this way they're all one tone so when you push a nine you get two different tones than if you push the four if you push a nine you'll get two tones and seven you'll get two tones but the nine and seven share a frequent the same frequency across that row 
Um, I'll provide more information on that into the future. Uh, adjusting touchstone pads, you need the proper tool and knowledge how to do that. I do not recommend trying that on your own unless you have lots of uh, phones to play with. I do recommend to new collectors, if you can find some junker phones, and I call them the BTH phones, that are just broken housings, ugly housings, and or missing parts, they're great for using for experimenting on. So um, you can learn how to clean stuff, clean scratches out, and if you end up damaging an item, you only spent a couple of bucks on the phone, so you're not out a lot. So I do recommend that. Also, if you are a collector and you have a multitude of phones, keep some of the plastics uh, that are no good uh, keep at least one and use that to try different chemicals on and procedures because it's okay to ruin something you're going to throw away versus something that you truly dearly want to keep. Um, there's many more uh, things that goes into refurbishing phones that I will cover later in the future. This will conclude the video. Please leave uh, comments below and give me a thumbs up and a like if you like this video. And I try to produce videos every two weeks approximately. However, the videos are a wide range of videos from uh, switching systems to business phone systems, as well as single line phones and other uh, telephone related things as well. Have a great day.